Good evening and welcome to the regular meeting of the Peabody City Council to be held in person, council only, and remotely on Thursday evening, September 10th, 2020. We're running a little bit late here at the Fre uh, Franklin L. Wiggins Auditorium. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, section 18, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the city council will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. No in-person public attendance of members will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Alternative public access to this meeting is being provided in the following manners, via Zoom and via PBD Access Television. It is also being recorded by the city's council's uh, stenographer. In attendance to the meeting, our Councilor Walton, Councilor Sasla, Councilor Charess, Councilor Gould, Councilor Mitsoulis, Councilor Manning Martin, Councilor Turco, Councilor O'Neill, Councilor Melville, Councilor McGinn, and I'm Council President, Councilor Rosignol. If you please rise and join me in a moment of silence. And now the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one, nation one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. President, move to approve the record. You heard the motion by Councilor Gould. There is no record at this time. Okay. I take back my motion. Thank you. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is hearing 4A, special permit. The clerk will read the notice. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody, acting as the special permit granting authority, will conduct a public hearing on Thursday evening, September 10, 2020, at 7.30 p.m. and conduct said public hearing in person, city council only, in the Frank L. Wigan Auditorium, 24 Lowell Street, Pewter, Mass, and remotely via Zoom for all other public participation on the application from City of Peabody Public Services Department, 50 Farm Avenue, Peabody, Mass, for a special permit seeking to expand the footprint by approximately 1,700 square feet to an existing non-conforming use at 0 Winona Street Assessor's Map 55, Parcel 43, PBD Mass is filed in accordance with Sections 1.5, 6.1, and 15.7 of the PBD Zoning Ordinance. Remote participation will take place using the Zoom platform. For Zoom information, please visit the City of PBD's website, www.pbd-ma.gov, under City Calendar on the homepage, or call the City Clerk's Office at 978 978-538-5756. Please note that Zoom information will not be available until the Friday before the meeting. Peabody City Council, Councilor Thomas J. Rosignol, City Council President. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Speaking on this matter is Mr. Labossier, and I'll invite him to come forward. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just want to make sure you can hear me. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, good evening. I'm Robert Labossier. I'm the Director of Public Services for the City of Peabody, and I'm here tonight to request approval of a special permit for the Winona Water Treatment Plant. Um, right now, it's an existing non-conforming um, structure, seeing that it's a manufacturing plant in a residentially zoned um, area. Um, we are looking to expand the footprint of the building. Um, we have two expansions, a small addition on the east side of the building where the entrance is to the building. Um, we're having a small addition for a handicap ramp um, to bring us into ADA compliance. And the other addition is about a 1400 square foot um, addition on the south side of the building between the building and the pond itself. Um, that is 
required by DEP for separation of our chemicals. Um, at this moment, our building does not meet um, compliance because of the chemicals that we have. They're not situated um, in a safe proximity. Um, so we have set up some temporary barriers um, there until such time as we can uh, make the building in compliance. Um, so we've spent the last year working closely with DEP on the design of the building. Um, we needed to have this addition so that we can safely store our chemicals that is necessary for treatment of the, of the um, drinking water. Um, and with that, I will open up to any questions that the council may have. Thank you, Mr. Labossier. Is there any attendees that would like to speak on this matter, either for or against, please raise your hand via remote participation. Seeing none, Councillor O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm in full support of this uh, special permit. Uh, uh, just for anyone watching and just to uh, remind uh, fellow councils, this is you know, phase three of the city's clean and sustainable water infrastructure plan that was approved last year by the city council. Uh, obviously the intent was to uh, improve our water flow, pressure and reliability throughout the city in four, uh, four phases. First phase was to increase the pipes to 12 inches on Route 1 um, and, and get that flowing down throughout the city. Uh, phase two is to get the water transmission lines to link up Coolidge water treatment plant with uh, the west side of the PBD. And we've also, there, as many of you know, we're building, you see a building on Lowell Street uh, near the high school, uh, past the high school near Brooksby, um, the road to Brooksby Farm. There's a booster plant that's going to really push the water out to the all parts of the city. And w once again, phase three is the water treatment plant, Winona, um, which is a significant part of this and cost of the project. But uh, uh, this is going to modernize it. It's, I think it was almost 50 years old or close to that and was beyond repair. So uh, while this whole project, I think, was close to $35 million or close to $36 million, it, it's, it's something that I think we all feel proud about voting for. Um, so th that aside, I, I, I guess if um, I don't have any questions and certainly open up to the uh, fellow councils, but uh, Mr. Labossier, thank you for coming tonight. Is there any update you want to give on the overall project to kind of where we're at? I know the mayor gave a call, but if you just wanted to give a, a quick uh, kind of snapshot of where we're at uh, uh, to that, that might be helpful. Thank you. Sure. Um, our booster pump station is approximately 90% complete. Um, there's a back order on one of the um, – pressure reducing valves that goes inside the building. Um, that is the only uh, piece of that that's holding us up right now. Um, obviously due to the COVID um, situation we have, a lot of manufacturing has been delayed. So that has been an issue, um, but we should, we should still be um, hitting our target of completion. Um, contract number two, which is the South Peabody side from Lynn Street to Lowell Street at 128. That is about 95% complete. All the water main itself has been installed. All the services have been changed over. Um, we're waiting on a part that's being made um, for the connection into the 24 inch P, uh, the 24 inch line on uh, Lynn Street. Um, we're supposed to be getting a schedule tomorrow to find out when that connection will be made. I think they'll start doing some of the prep work for it um, the end of next week. Um, there's a little bit of prep work they have to do on the existing 24 inch main uh, before they can make the tie in. Um, and then con the other contract um, coming through from route one coming all the way down Lowell street all the way to 128. That's probably about 80% done. We need to finish the stretch um, from Proctor Circle to 128. Um, we're having a little bit of an issue there trying to shut the um, existing main completely down so that they can get that um, running. But um, we're out there working on that quite a bit today. So um, hopefully within the next three weeks, that will be completed itself. So by the end of September, maybe the first or second week in October, we should be completely uh, finished on the water main projects. Um, we will then be um, getting our, at that point come November 1st is when we're gonna start with the um, 
trial runs of the pump station. The pump station will take a little while to get the pumps running. Um, we got to build up pressure so that, you know, we, we don't want to be bursting any pipes and whatnot. So it'll take a little bit of time to, to ramp the pressures up, especially in the Brooksby farm area where the, a lot, I know a lot of residents are anticipating um, better pressure up in that area and we hope to, uh, to uh, make them happy. So by Thanksgiving, I'm, I'm sure everybody will be happy with uh, our water transmission. So if you have any other questions on the construction, just uh, let me know. No, thank you for that answer and, uh, and update. And, uh, and while I know it's uh, challenging with any kind of infrastructure project in a city as big as this, in addition to the other things, I think overall, while there's been some headaches for people dealing with bumpy roads, at the end of the day, those roads will be repaired as part of phase four of the project. And I think that this is gonna be the long-term um, benefit to the city. We're not tying into the MWRA. And so we're, we're putting the cost to our own infrastructure. So I, I think it's great, but thank you. No, no further questions, does any other council have anything? Any councilors wish to speak on this matter? Councilor Charest. Thank you, Council President. Uh, through you to Bob, the boss here. I, you know, I'm, I'm very excited and I'm, I'm happy to hear when you mentioned Brooksby uh, Farm because I get numerous calls um, wanting me to know, um, you know when it's gonna complete. And you know, they've been holding their breath for well over 15 years when they first started speaking about how bad the pressure is. So hearing you speak specifically about Brooksby, and I know my fellow counselors have neighborhoods that I have low water pressure also, and they're certainly happy to, to hear that it's gonna be um, resolved in Thanksgiving time. So I really tip my hat off to all the workers that was getting this done, and, and it seemed like a long process, but if you really look at what needed to get done, it was pretty amazing to, um, to have run those lines and getting this water treatment plant up and going. So again, I, I wanna thank you. It's, 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 I know my neighbors uh, would really actually never thought it was gonna come true. So uh, to the, from them, I wanna pass the thank you on. Thank you. Councilor Turco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to uh, Mr. Labos. Yeah, just two questions, Bob. Um, when, it, when are you actually going to begin construction on the Winona plant itself? So the, the contractor started mobilizing um, on Tuesday of this week. So they've already started um, the construction. They haven't started the construction. They started putting in um, siltation um, barriers, um, and then they got some test pits to do, some exploratory work to do. Um, they're also gonna do dewatering of one of the residual ponds um, out there that they have to clean out. Um, but the construction itself for like footings for these additions probably won't start until beginning of October, middle of October. That's when the, the main part of that type of um, construction will start. Um, they've already submitted quite a bit of work, um, cut sheets for Electrical, I know electrical is the biggest de um, time delay that we have on ordering parts. Um, we have a time period of January 1st for a shutdown. So they have to get quite a bit of stuff in place before we can start the four month shutdown in January. So it's on a very critical path, um, but you won't see any major construction there for at least another a month. Thank you. My other question with regards to the construction, do you anticipate that most of it will be done during the daytime? Uh, is there any nighttime work um, in the neighborhood or anything the neighbors should be aware of? Uh, nope. Road work? No, no, night, no night work at all. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate it. Any further questions from councilors? Councilor Walton. Thank you, Mr. President. Through you to uh, Mr. Labossier. Um, I'm sorry, Bob, would you just mind repeating, you had mentioned you're waiting on, um, I think, a fitting. Was that in the Linfield County uh, section of the work that you're doing? Yes, yeah, so on the Lynn Street side, um, we have to put a line stop in. Um, that's a device that they put in to stop the flow of water down the 24-inch line. Um, the gear... The, the valves that we have between Brown Street and the treatment plant are 115 years old. They're old style gear valves. 
and they have ceased. They're, they're seized up. We've tried everything to get those to move. We can't. So this is a special device that comes in with a special company. It comes in and puts this line stop in the middle of this pipe while it's alive to stop the flow of water. So that had to be ordered. It's specifically made. We did some test pits. We um, were able to measure the di diameter of the inside of the pipe and outside of the pipe through another special piece of equipment. And then they ordered the line stop. So that's, that. from what I've been told, that's in the distribution um, warehouse and it's coming out and um, they anticipate hopefully putting it in, start digging next Friday, and then there's a schedule coming out for when they're gonna be putting in the week after. Okay, great, thank you. Any further questions from councilors? Seeing none, Councilor O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. At this time, I'd move to recess this hearing. So moved. You heard the motion by Councilor O'Neill. Seeing no discussion on the motion, roll call vote. Councillor Welton. Yes. Sasslaw. Oh, just a question. Um, Councillor Sasslaw. Oh, are, we, are we still um, under the same rules when we had Zoom meetings? We're doing two? Yes. Okay. Where the public still can't access our meetings, I thought that allowing the public to have as much participation as possible will continue the same format um, that we have already established. Th thank you for that clarification, Council President. Uh, on the vote, uh, yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. Yes. Manny Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion to recess carries 11 to 0. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Labossier. Thank you as well. Next item on the agenda is uh, hearing 4B. Special Permit, Jessica Capella, 149 Washington Street. The clerk will read the notice. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Peabody, acting as the Special Permit Granting Authority, will... <coughs> That's not recessed. Hold the public hearing on Thursday evening, September 10, 2020, at 7.30 p.m., and conduct said hearing in person, City Council only, in the Frank L. Wigan Auditorium, 24 Lowell Street, Peabody, Mass., and remotely via Zoom for all other public participation on the application from Jessica Capellan, 6 Oak Street, PBD Mass, for a special permit seeking to operate a hair salon, nail salon, and skin depilatory service at 149 Washington Street, PBD Mass, is filed in accordance with sections 4.2.5, 6.1, and 15.7 of the PBD Zoning Ordinance. Remote participation will take place using the Zoom platform. For Zoom, Zoom information, please visit the City of PBD's website www.pbd-ma.gov under city calendar on the home page or call the city clerk's office at 978-538-5756. Please note that Zoom information will not be available until the Friday before the meeting. PBD City Council, Councilor Thomas J. Rosignol, City Council President. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I'll now invite Petitioner Jessica Capellan as well as Francis Martinez to speak on this matter. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, PBD City Council, thank you for uh, taking the opportunity to read this application. My name is Francis Martinez. I am the president and CEO of the North Shore Latino Business Association, and I am representing uh, Jessica Capella for uh, her petition for a hair salon on 149 Washington Street. Uh, Jessica only speaks Spanish, uh, so any question, I will be able to translate any answer that she has for you. Thank you, Mrs. Martinez. Just um, state for the record what the intent for the business is and the location. Jessica, la pregunta que están haciendo en este momento es cuál es la intención de tu uh, solicitud a permiso especial. ¿Cuál es la intención tuya para el permiso especial? Eh, brindarle un servicio para los clientes. ¿De un salón de belleza? Un salón de belleza. 
Uh, she'd like to, uh, a special permit to open a hair salon to serve the community and uh, serve with good, 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 uh, good standing. Thank you very much. Is there any attendees in the audience that would like to speak on this matter? Please re remotely use your ha hand signal. Seeing none, uh, I will now ask Councilwoman again. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I've been in contact with the applicant and uh, Francis Martinez from the North Shore Latino Business Association, who's assisting uh, Ms. Capellan, as, as you uh, heard a moment ago. Uh, this location is near a busy intersection of Washington and Foster Street and has been utilized for other businesses in the past. Um, it's going to rely fully on on-street parking for employees and customers. It is, uh, I don't see this as uh, an issue given Ms. Capellan's intent is to run a fairly small-scale business uh, where at least initially she'll be the only employee servicing one customer by appointment. Uh, this, this could expand to uh, two service providers over time. Um, discuss this uh, with uh, Ms. Capellan and she's uh, agreeable. Uh, to that condition. So I support this application, and at this time I would defer to other councils. Is there any other councils that would like to speak on this matter? Councilor Welton. Thank you, Mr. President, um, and thank you for the explanation of, of um, the business and what's going to be going on there, uh, Ms. Martinez. Uh, just a couple quick questions. Um, Regarding, I saw on hours of operation, the hours are listed from nine to seven, but the days aren't listed. I don't know if, if that, if I might, if through through you, Mr. President, to Councilor McGinn. Councilor McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Through you to um, Council Wilton. Yes, I did get clarification on that, and it's um, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. Okay, thank you. Um, and then my only other question, um, maybe to Ms. Martinez, is. Uh, I saw the skin, de de excuse me, <laughs> depilatory uh, services we provided. I believe that's uh, hair removal. Um, I just uh, want to confirm that all uh, proper licenses are in place uh, to provide such services, and I think those services are currently not allowed under COVID restrictions, and just want to clarify that, um, A, that the, the uh, Salon owner is certified to do that, and that uh, is understanding that they might not be able to do that until the COVID restrictions allow. Yes, I do understand uh, that that is um, right now under the guidelines of uh, COVID-19 that is not permitted. But Ms. Capella has all the license uh, required to run a hair salon and to be able to serve, uh, basically in, in general, for it at hair salon and and other services. Okay, great. And then with the um, the skin services, that does not include injectable services like Botox or collagen or anything in addition, does no, it? No, that no, that's not included. No. Okay, thank you. And um, my only last comment is just I understand um, that uh, there's no designated parking there. Um, I would just say you know to do your best to make sure that you're working within the neighborhood to accommodate all the multiple parking needs that might happen there. Uh, but, but good luck and, and thank you. Thank you. Any further councilors? Councilor Melville. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm a neighbor looking forward to, uh, well, not an abutting neighbor, but I, Hancock Street, which is across the way. Welcome to the neighborhood. Wish you nothing but success. Thank you. Jessica, te están dando la bienvenida uh, al vecindario. Thank you. Mr. President. Councilor Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. I also wish them well, and I'd also like to give a shout out to Ms. Martinez. You do, uh, you're a good, great advocate for your Latino community and keep up the good work. Thank you so much. It's, it's an honor to be able to serve the community. And uh, when we say Latino, we also serve everyone. So like I did say to Councilor um, again, that if anything, comes across with anyone doing business in the city of PVD and they have a language barrier, please don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, we are able to support. The, uh, the uh, idea is to be able to make our economy stronger and to have people welcome them 
in any place in the, in, in the North Shore. Well, thank you for what you do. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Any further counselors? Seeing none, Councilman again. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, before I make a motion here, I just um, want to uh, comment to the applicant because um, I'm not sure that I mentioned this when we spoke. We, given the current uh, restrictions that exist on our meetings and limited uh, public access via remote means, um, all our special permit hearings are recessed and a vote is taken at the second meeting and that's to allow maximum uh, participation by the public uh, over the course of, of the uh, period of time between the two meetings. So um, I just want you to be clear that we're, we're not acting on this definitively tonight. Um, the motion will be to recess the hearing until September 24th. So um, it will be necessary for you to uh, attend that meeting remotely as well. And at, the, and at that point in time, uh, given any unforeseen circumstances, we should be able to close this out. Is that? Uh, yes, she is, is aware of that. Great, perfect. Thank you. Um, so well, with that, I would move to recess uh, this hearing to September 24th, so moved. You the motion by Council McGinn. Seeing no discussion on the motion, roll call vote. Councilor Welton. Yes. Fassler. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Sharon. Yes. Annie Martin. Yes. Perko. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is reports of committee. First, I'd like to report there was a committee of the whole met on exe in executive session on August 18th, 2020 to discuss pending litigation regarding McIntyre versus the city of Peabody, as well as um, open meeting law complaints. And this is a report of progress. Next is industrial community development, Councilor Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we had a very um, informative and uh, I'd like to say uh, a two-way street dialogue with the mayor in regards to the city-owned properties. We, we basically highlighted the uh, 6, 10, 12 pieces of property that Mr. Bellavance has brought to our attention um, in an August 12, 2019 memorandum. And it was good dialogue. Uh, the mayor was uh, went into some depth um, when it came to each address, and the councilors were able to give their opinions. Uh, and uh, we look forward to further discussion on uh, any of the the addresses. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Gould. Second report, or third report of committee, Finance Committee, Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Finance Committee met uh, earlier this evening, September 10th. Uh, present for the committee were Councilors Gould, O'Neill, Manning, Martin, Turco, and myself as chair. Also present, uh, Councilor Welton, Monsoulis, Cheris, Saslaw, Melville, and Rosignol. Uh, there were several uh, items on the agenda. The first was a transfer request, general fund cable uh, revenues in an amount of 128000 uh, there was a motion by Councilor Gould as follows, uh, move to uh, approve a transfer from uh, receipts reserve cable fund account number 270-0000-33017 in amount of $128,000 to general fund cable revenue account number 100-0000043513 in amount of $128,000 and also uh, from receipts, reserve cable fund, account number 270-0000-33017 in amount of $120,000 to cable fund expense, 200, uh, excuse me, account number 270-0000-53007 in amount of $120,000. That motion uh, passed unanimously, Mr. President. I now bring that motion to the full council for a vote. So moved. Here the motion by Council McGinn. Seeing no discussion on the motion, roll call vote. Councilors Welton. Yes. Saslaw. Yes. Matsoulis. <coughs> yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. Yes. Manning Martin. Turco. 
Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. The next item on the agenda was a transfer funds cable fund expense in an amount of $9,600. There was a motion from Council Gould to approve the transfer from uh, receipts reserve cable fund account number 27000033017 in amount of $9,600 to cable fund expense account number 27000053007 in amount of $9,600. That motion passed unanimously at committee and I now bring that to a as a motion to the full council Mr. President so move. You heard the motion by Council McGinn seeing no discussion on the motion roll call vote. Councilor Welton. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. Yes. Manny Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. Again. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Council again. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda was a transfer of funds cable ex uh, fund expense in an amount of $218,288.39. Uh, it was presented to us by uh, Director of Finance, Mr. Gingras. Uh, the, uh, there was a motion from Councilor Gould as follows, move to approve uh, transfer funds from receipts reserve cable fund, account number 27000033017 in amount of $218,288.39 to cable fund expense, account number 27000053007 in amount of $218,288.39. That motion passed unanimously by the committee and I now bring it to the full council for a vote. Mr. President, so moved. You heard the motion by Council McGinn. Seeing no discussion on the motion, roll call vote. Council Welton. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Masoulis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. Yes. Manny Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. The next item on the agenda was a transfer of funds, CPC Housing Critical Care Repair in the amount of $40,000. Uh, it was presented to us by Director of Finance, Mr. Gingras, and Community Development, uh, and with some clarifying answers to questions by Ms. Bernson from Community Development Department. Uh, after some discussion on the matter, there was, uh, there was a motion from Council Gould to transfer the, uh, approve a transfer from CPC affordable housing account number 27000033023 in amount of $40,000 to CPC housing critical care repair account number 27018115564 in an amount of $40,000 that motion passed unanimously and I now bring that to the full council for a vote Mr. President so moved Hear the motion by Council McGinn uh, on the motion. I'm sorry, which Council um, Manning Martin. Thank you. Is this E, um, Council McGinn? I'm sorry. This is D. D. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion on the motion, roll call vote. Councilors Welton. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Tulis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. Yes. Manning Martin. <coughs> yes. Turco. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Next item on the agenda was a transfer of funds, various department accounts, an amount of $385,293. Uh, this was presented to us by Director of Finance, Mr. Zingris, uh, on behalf of the mayor. Uh, this is uh, in part to nearly close out fiscal. 2020, um, he did alert us to the fact that there would be likely one more uh, closeout request coming uh, for the prior fiscal year. Um, <clears throat> there was a uh, number of questions on this uh, which were addressed by Mr. Gingras and ultimately a motion by Council Gould as follows to approve the transfer from uh, various Department accounts as itemized on a correspondence from His Honor the Mayor 
dated August 17th, 2020, two various departments uh, itemized on that same list attached to the same communication in the amount of $385,293. That motion passed uh, with a vote of four to one in committee, and I now bring that motion to the full council for consideration. Mr. President, so moved. The motion by Council McGinn. Seeing no discussion on the motion, roll call vote. Councilors Welton. Yes. Fasloff. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. Yes. Mary Martin. No. Turco. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 10 to 1. Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Last item on the agenda was a uh, transfer of funds request for CPC Bikeway Independence Greenway Extension Project in the amount of $341,384.25. Uh, this was presented to us by Director of Finance, Mr. Gingras, and the uh, Director of Community Development, Mr. Bellavance, and uh, Brennan Callahan uh, of Community Development. Um, there were a number of questions on this addressed uh, primarily by community development. Um, of particular note was the overall uh, cost of the project, uh, which will be uh, in excess of uh, $11 million. However, uh, this is funded uh, primarily uh, by the TIP program uh, transportation improvement program, which is which is federal and state money, uh, so this this uh, transfer from CPC uh, allows us to leverage that uh, that external funding uh, source. So, um, after some uh, clarification on that matter, uh, there was a motion from Council Gould to approve the transfer from account number. Uh, I'm sorry, from CPC open space fund balance. Account number 270-0000-33021 in amount of $341,384.25 to CPC Bikeway Independence Greenway Extension Project. Account number 270-1811-585-62-2018-000350 in an amount of $341,384.25. That motion passed unanimously. Mr. President, I now bring that motion to the full council for consideration, so moved. You heard the motion by Council McGinn. Seeing no discussion on the motion, roll call vote. Councilors Welton. Yes. Fasloff. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. Yes. Kenny Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Council McGinn. Uh, we, we, uh, that was our final agenda item, uh, and that is a uh, report of committee, Mr. President. Thank you. Council again. Next item on the agenda is motions, <coughs> orders, and resolutions. Councilor Welton. Mr. President, I have no motions this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Welton. Councilor Sassler. Uh, thank you, Council President. I have uh, no motions. I would like to though, remind the public that starting next week, schools will be back in session. So if everyone can just be patient and uh, relax with the buses on the road, and everyone getting into swing of things. So uh, once again, school will be in session in Peabody next week. And lastly, I, I would like to uh, compliment the entire school committee. Uh, like many, I've been following their meetings and they've been working extremely hard trying to uh, find the right answer. There's no perfect answer in this day, but I, I, I did want to compliment them on all the time they've spent trying to do the best thing they can for everybody uh, and for all the students and teachers in the city of Peabody. Uh, my hat's off to them for the work they've been doing. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Sassala. Councilor Matsoulis. No motions, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Matsoulis. Councilor Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. I have one motion uh, to have Department of Public Services look at a manhole cover that is sunk in front of, this is a co-motion, I'm sorry, with Councilor Matsoulis. A manhole cover is sunk in front of 12 Westview Circle. So move, Mr. President. Could you just state the address again, please? 12 Westview Circle. Thank you. You heard the motion by Councilor Gould. Seeing no discussion on the motion, roll call vote. Councilor Welton. Yes. Fasloff. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. 
Yes. Jenny Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Councilor Gould. No further motions, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Gould. Councilor Charas. Thank you, Council President. I have one motion to um, accept item 8A, to communications from Sydney Nagel, thanking us for her um, uh, scholarship. And just like to tell her that she should come by and see the big bald baker at Endicott and probably get some special pastries. So move. Here is a motion by Councilor Shress. Seeing no discussion on the motion, roll call vote. Councilor Welton. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Masoulis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. Yes. Nanny Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Councilor Shress. Thank you. I'd just like to uh, move, accept item 9B, entertainment license for Amigos Mexican Kitchen and Tequila Bar at 210 Andover Street for a renewal of license with all papers in order. I know there's a, I, thank you, Councilor McGinn. Also, Stansy's Country Ranch, 1 Main Street, with all papers in order. So move. You heard the motion by Councilor Shiraz. Seeing no motion, roll call vote. Councilor Welton. Yes. Sasla. Matsoulis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. Yes. Manny Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Councilor Shiraz. Thank you. And I'd like to ask the clerk, clerk to set up a subcommittee meeting with the ad hoc Committee of City Council and School Committee at some point. It, it can be an off night, it can be whenever they, uh, the members there can. So move. You heard the motion by Council Chires. Seeing no discussion on the motion, roll call vote. Councilor Welton. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. Yes. Nanny Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Councilor Chires. Thank you. I'd just like to make a, a comment kind of in line with my fellow counselor. I uh, spoke about schools being in session. I, I just want to thank the, um, the middle and upper administration workers. Um, these people throughout the last several months have worked their tails off for trying to get things in play, um, what their classroom's gonna be, the school's gonna be, their program's gonna be. Um, it just, you know, you, you always, you always want to recognize the teachers and they, they need that and the top administrators, the superintendent and assistant, but there's a whole mechanism right in between them and that's the middle management who work tirelessly seven days a week throughout the whole day and night. Um, I can just say firsthand, I know this from uh, my wife who works in a different district these people, just like Peabody, they work their tails off. And um, they really want to do the best for education. So I just want to recognize them with that. Uh, doesn't have to go to, obviously, not a vote, just to recognize. And just with that being said, you know, I, I recently read something and it really made me think about the times we're in right now. There was a good statement, it was a very smart individual, and said, I need you, you need me, we, the world need each other to work in harmony. I just saw that just recently and it really made me think how, how right that is. So just leave you tonight from Ed Charis with that repeat statement. Thank you. Thank you, Council Charis. Council Manning Martin. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I want to, I don't have a motion, but I do want to uh, thank and commend our city clerk, Allison Danforth, for the phenomenal work that she and her staff and um, group of many, many volunteers that successfully ran a primary that really went off without a hitch. You had mail-in uh, votes this time around for this primary absentee ballots, all while dealing with COVID and social distancing. It was quite, quite 
a well orchestrated, very, very difficult task that you accomplished. And all I hear from the voters and the residents are uh, what a positive day it was, how it, everything was very safe, they felt safe, they appreciated um, all the time that was put in by the city and you to allow them to, to go vote in that manner. They really appreciated it. And what a lot of the public does not know is that our city clerk has also been in her office every day uh, throughout this pandemic. Uh, she has not take, you know, she hasn't been working from home. She's been in the office dealing with day-to-day -day, um, clerk stuff. And, and you've been doing really, really so much work um, understaffed under such stress and challenges that you've been remarkable. And I want to thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. I would be remiss if I did not point out that there were many hands, my staff, other City Hall employees who pitched in, our poll workers, and even some people in this room who helped out at the polls on election days. We couldn't have done it without everybody pulling together. So thank you for your kind words. You're quite welcome, and I'm sure I speak for the rest of the uh, council when I say, you know, it's an even bigger day coming up in November, and you can count on us uh, to support you in whatever way you need. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Manning Martin. Councilor Turco. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Move to receive and approve item 8B, executive session minutes from November 29th, 2018. Hear the motion by Councilor Turco. Seeing no discussion on the motion, roll call vote. Councilor Welton. Yes. Sasslaw. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. Yes. Manning Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Councilor Turco. Thank you, Mr. President. Then the suspension of the rules move to receive and approve all papers being in order. Item 9A, junk deals, license renewals for 2020, Bill Sale of Music and Fofo, 136 Main Street, Martoni and James, 215 Newbury Street, the Maud House, 58 Pulaski Street, Building C, 4th Floor. So moved. You heard the motion by Councilor Turco. Seeing no discussion on the motion, roll call vote. Councilors Welton. Yes. Sasslaw. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. Yes. Manning Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Councilor Turco. No further motions, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Turco. Councilor O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. No motions this evening. Councilor O'Neill. Councilor Melville. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, no motions this evening. Councilor Melville. Councilor McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. No motions. Thank you, Councilman McGinn. Councilor Turco. Thank you, Mr. President. I neglected to, um, I just wanted to let the public know that uh, Thursday, sep September 17th, the Planning Board will be meeting to go over um, 84 requirements proposed uh, for the Stonegate subdivision. Some of those have been resolved, uh, but they're going to go through those items publicly. Um, and this project is rapidly coming to um, a point where it may be approved, you know, within the next six weeks. So anybody interested in that Stonegate subdivision, I would recommend they watch the planning board on the 17th. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Turco. I have no motions this evening. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. You heard the motion by Council McGinn. Roll call vote. Councilors Welton. Yes. Sasslaw. Yes. Matsoulis. Yes. Gould. Yes. Charis. Yes. Manny Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Rosignol. Yes. Motion carries 11 to 0. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.